So let's talk about this nice new shiny part. This is a complete trunk pan assembly from AMD. It has the provisions for the fuel tank and it has the provisions for the, you know, body mounts. And it's all one piece. But here's the issue, guys. This, this part is for Chevelle. So this entire rear panel back here is not correct for Oldsmobiles. So the issue is that what we have here, which I alluded to at the end of the last video, is significantly compromised. So what I have to do, and I'm gonna kind of bring you guys along for the ride here, I have to figure out how to utilize as much of this and this as possible. Because this comes up at an angle, this rear part of the trunk pan in an Oldsmobile has this kind of chamfered angle. And on a Chevelle, it comes straight up and down. This is, this is basically vertical. So that's the challenge that I have there. The, the other thing I wanna do is I really wanna save this part of the trunk pan anyway, because who can see what that says? OLDS. Okay, so that's that's important to me to try to keep this piece. We'll have to clean all this, this rust up, obviously. But I want to keep that because that shows, you know, an original an original part. We're all gonna know that I'm grafting on another piece to this. But I'd like to save this little cool thing if I can. So here's here's where I kind of gotta get pretty crafty. See what I can salvage out of this. Maybe I have to cut this whole thing right along here. And to remove this. Utilizing that part of that one. You know, the, the, the flat part where the body mount resides from that donor. Maybe I'll do the same type thing when we put the firewall piece in. I can cut it halfway through a hole to make sure that I have the dimension correct. Saws all. Uh, okay, so that's kind of where, well, that's not gonna apply. That logic will not apply, folks, to this side. So I just got, you know, bring you guys along for how we're gonna brainstorm to get this, get this all worked out. It'll be fun, it'll be interesting. And at the end of the day, it'll be pretty cool to see what it really takes to make a Chevelle trunk pan fit in a Slowsmobile. I think one of the strategies that I'm considering here is to actually drill out all these spot welds and get this piece right off of the trunk pan. Look, we know it's not right. We know that vertical piece is for a Chevelle, so we know it's not going to work. So why even fight the funk? Let's drill these spot welds out, get this piece off nicely, and then we can see how we lay this on the car, how it's going to line up. So this would have been easier if I did this when the floors were out. I drilled out all the spot welds for the rear seat panel that connects to the rear seat floor pan because the trunk floor, the full trunk floor, has a tab on it that goes underneath the rear seat back panel. It sits on there and gets spot welded to that. And I really don't want to start separating this to make this fit that rotted junk. So I'm just going to keep on trucking under here, drill out the rest of these spot welds, and this is that, this is that rear seat pan here, this piece here. Uh, I'm gonna drill these spot welds out and just try to get this whole beam out of here. Okay, that's what I'm working on. This is what got accomplished today. I took out the front trunk floor support. It goes between the rear seat pan and it, the back of the rear seat panel. It sandwiches between these pieces here. And there's, I don't know, I think I counted 32 or 33 spot welds along the bottom of the trunk. Uh, I'm sorry, the uh, rear seat floor pan. Because I really want the new trunk floor pan to go where it originally went. This is all I have holding the original car together. The back part of the rear seat floor and the back part of the upper rear seat. The rest of it, everybody, is pretty weak, so I really didn't want to compromise all that. That is where I am right now, and let me just show everybody what this 
piece looks like. This is the new trunk floor assembly. And this is the front of that. You guys can visualize that. Okay. So this tab right here is the tab that goes between the rear seat backing and the rear seat under seat floor. And this is that, this is that same tab that goes there. So obviously these bases sit on top of the frame of the car. That cannot be, so it came out. It came out with a pretty significant amount of reluctancy, I might say. And, you know, you just got to keep drilling. Wore out two, maybe three spot weld drill bits. And split it with a chisel and pry it apart, and there you have it. Okay, that's today's, that's today's progress, and I'm beat. So that's that, and we'll just keep on chipping away towards the back here. And hopefully we can make this part look like the front part. Here I am trying to make a plan on the trunk area here of the car. And I want to just talk through some of my mental strategies here for my own sake, quite honestly. And see how it, see how it comes to fruition, basically. If it can come to fruition. This is the top part of the rear seat bottom. Obviously, we talked about how I had to save this piece because I didn't like how the aftermarket one, which is in my lap here, how none of these seatbelt mounts lined up. This whole thing overall is a little too narrow. So I opted to save this portion of the original car. But I beat the heck out of it getting all the spot welds drilled out. So what I think I'm going to do is I saved the piece that I cut off here that I didn't like. I'm going to cut here and I'll punch some holes with my, my hole punch and probably just weld it on the other side of this. This new piece welded to this to replace this piece. So at least I have a nice true mounting surface with which to mount the new trunk floor there. Okay onto the rear seat uh, floor. Then it only leaves me the package tray, which will need some work. I'm sorry, a rear seat divider rather, which is below the package tray. So the rear seat divider will need some work, but I can always put another top layer of tin on the inside of that, you know? And this all gets sandwiched together like this, holding the trunk floor in between. So that's step one, let's call it. Then we get into the rear wheel wells. You know, and I'm really trying to save what I can here, borderlining the automotive archeology span portion of things. You can see I've drawn a, let me put this piece down, I'm sorry. You can see I've drawn a line here where I intend to cut. And each one of these will be a piece, right? So this, this will be all one piece that I make. I'll put a little kernel in it and try and weld on that, on that rib. And then down here will be another piece stopping uh, here. Saving this, replacing all this. And then this part of the rear inner wheel well housing, I'll have to fabricate. You can see how it kind of comes in and goes down behind the trunk drop down. Yeah, there's a, there's a lot of funk in here. And again, this video is as much for me as anybody else. Because as you think about things over and over again, you come up with different strategies and I really think this is a good one. I think at this point, okay? That'll get me, once that's all completed, it'll get me inner wheel houses repaired and this area ready to receive the trunk floor, leaving me with the balance of all this. But one thing at a time, okay. I've cut off that mounting flange where the trunk floor tab sits. And then this 
rear seat panel behind the back seat kind of sandwiches all that together. So I've cut that off of that, I've cleaned that all up, and I've cut this piece off of the new under rear seat floor pan, the top of it. Punched my holes in it, prepped it, and this is what's gonna go. I'll show you guys how this goes together. And I'll show you what I got done yesterday here. This piece is now gonna go. I kinda clean that all up. That is gonna be the only original part of the floor pan left. That's just some pitting there, but there's really no rot on this piece at this portion of it. But this piece goes um, like this. Is that the way? Okay, so now we have a nice, flat, true mounting flange for the trunk floor to sit on, and it's gonna get sandwiched in there. So I'm happy with having salvaged that part. Glad I didn't chuck it. Spot welded to that. That's going to be good. Then we'll have to work on some portions of this because it's a little bit funky. But here's what I've done to come up with a plan for working my way from front to back. I've cut out on both sides the portion of the wheelhouse, the inner wheelhouse, that the trunk floor tab spot welds too, okay? Kind of prep the wheelhouse where I'm gonna weld. I figured I'm gonna cut it right on that rib and I'll make a new panel for this, okay? And spot weld it in, both sides, nice and neat. Once that's all in, then I feel like I can work my way back to doing this piece and this piece. One. Left side, right side, left side, right side. Okay, so that's what I got done yesterday. And all this stuff piece by piece will just be eliminated. Okay, I think Joe's got the trunk drop downs sourced and kind of on their way. We gotta wait for them a little bit. Just to reiterate for a quick second, guys, uh, we do not have the trunk drop downs on order. The manufacturers have discontinued that part for 1969. So if anybody has any available that you purchased and didn't use or know someone who has some good solid trunk drop downs you can always contact us via email our email address is always in the description of our videos and they're uh i don't think they're in stock at the moment but that's okay we can we can work around that for now so tunnel vision right i think i'm happy with with the solution i've come up with here Maybe this afternoon, I'll start making these patches here, and then we can start seeing nice new shiny metal back here. What I had in mind was to replace these pieces that I cut out. give you guys a visual of what I'm talking about here. I didn't do any video of making it. Maybe I should, maybe I'll do it in the next one. So here's a piece of the original inner rear wheel well. All those spot weld holes there are where the trunk floor pan mounts to it. This obviously could not be saved. This is this is trash. And then what I made were these pieces. Well, that was this piece you know, left side here. So this is where it's going to get welded in. Left myself a little underlap there so I can build the weld up pretty heavy. And I'll grind it flat. I even got that detent in there, and that's pretty smooth right there. So once I get this piece in, and then I'll come over here, like I said before, and I'll do this piece maybe tomorrow. And that'll get me able to go to the back half here. But I'm telling you what, man. You know, I'm not the best fabricator. I'm not the quickest fabricator. This piece, two and a half hours. That's what it takes, guys, to do that. Let me come over here and show you kind of how the fit is from the outside. You know, I really wanted that line to be really smooth. You know, this actually closes up when you push it in. You see, it closes up a lot better. So this is all going to get... You know, finished up because I don't want it to look like it was ever replaced. 
but that gives you the profile of the original wheel housing. It's a pretty, pretty ominous sight, I understand, but little by little, we'll have solid metal in here. Okay, so it, there's a good, a good pick picture of how it fits. You know, that's <laughs> that little thing right there. You know, that, that's not a two second thing to do. But it's done, and that's how I'll do the other side, okay? Not looking as ugly as it did. Keep watching. Okay, so once we do this, we go to the other side with that big cookie monster void out of there. Once those two pieces are in, I'll move to the rest of all through here. From the other side, you can see, I think I'm leaving a little bit too much editing for Joe to do, right? There's the rear portions of the inner wheel houses. And I intend to make from a piece from there all the way down to here. One piece. So I'll have one, two, and then we'll get into that third piece. All right. The plan is to get all of this stuff together so we can get this car maybe back into, you know, a solid structure underneath and get the new trunk floor in the car to match all this, okay? Started with something like this, which was here in the inner wheelhouse. And there we have it, the new piece in, tacked in. You know, I'm just gonna keep tacking it in. But now I know that this piece and this piece are one, both sides. And I can start, now I'm gonna tack in the piece for the back seat here. And we're going to just work our way back. We're going to start here, get to the left and right side. Nice and systematically, guys. You know, there's no race here, obviously. But we can go from the new floors to the original part of the rear seat floor to that piece that's going to be spot welded, the piece from the new aftermarket floor spot welded to this. This will allow the new floor pan to get pinched in there between the rear seat panel, the divider, and the rear seat floor pan, the new trunk floor goes in that way. But obviously this is all what had to be repaired and it leaves us now with the rest of this hysteria, madness. So this will get cut out and made just like these. Once this is all spot welded in, then I'll just sit here and tacky, 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 keep going all the way around, all the way around. But at least we're making progress. You know, I even have the, the little dent in there, you know, so you know, for the judges at Pebble Beach. You know what I mean? Okay, progress. Love it.